got one of the biggest complaints, I think, this last week or so of um, living in a parsonage. Does everyone know what a parsonage is? Not a pear tree, a parsonage. It's my, it's my house. It's the one right up in front here. And I'm blessed with it because the church says, hey, you come be our pastor. You, you can live in the fishbowl up in front here. Everybody can see you. But uh, I'll tell you, I got up the other day, and um, and I got a kind of a routine. You all have a routine when you get up in the morning, kind of what you do? Yeah. I get up, take a shower, and, and, uh, and uh, get all ready to go, and, and headed up to see Dave up in uh, at uh, Columbus. He's in the hospital right now. And I got into this really well lit hospital. And I'm walking by one of these glass doors in the mirrors. And I'm like, and I look and I'm like, who? What in the world? Who addressed you this morning? And I started looking at it and I said, man, look at that hair. You see, it's really dimly lit over in the parsonage. I looked really good when I left. <laughs> I have no idea what happened between there and when I got to Columbus. But, I mean, it was, it was kind of frightening even. And, 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 and then when I got done with there, I, I went over to Walmart nearby. And, you ever go to Walmart and just look at people? <laughs> Probably one of them had been looking at. But, but uh, seriously, you, you think, who in the world dressed you this morning? And, and, and look at that hairdo. I mean, Chaz is a good hair man. I mean... He just is. He, just, he had the little green thing going on this last week. And, uh, he's always got kind of the bedhead thing going on. And, yeah, I, I'm sure it's a style. It is. But um, you ever just think, yeah, man, I got a bad hair day? Anyone have a bad, does anyone ever have, have, have a bad hair day? Yeah. I do more days than not. But, um, but I started looking at, at scripture this week and the different things I want to talk about. And, 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 and uh, let's look at uh, let's look at our first scripture it's from James 1, 19 through twenty seven. And and I want you to, I want you to listen to the words here a little bit, not a little bit, a lot of it. Really listen to the words or read the words with me up, up on, the, on the screen. It says, my dear brothers, take notice of this: everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to become angry. For man's anger does not bring about the righteous life that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humble, humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive, your, so to deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like a man who what looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like but the man who looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues to do this not forgetting what he has heard but doing it he will be blessed in what he does if anyone considers himself more religious and yet does not keep a tight rein on his tongue, he deceives himself, and his religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts, as pure and faultless as this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. We hear about religious people all the time. Even through scripture, we hear about religious people, the, the first cynical people. The ones who like to throw the laws at you and the different things like that. That is not the religion we're talking about here this morning. The religion it talks about that is pure and faultless is, is it's a religio, is, is in Greek. And what it means is a deep, godly uh, relationship is what it is. Now, religion, in other sense, in a lot of other texts and stuff, means, means a, a thing that you've adopted, a religion that you follow, the doctrine that you, 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 you get into, and the rules that you, you follow. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about a, re, a, a religion, a relationship that is pure and faultless as to what? Look after the orphans and the widows. And that's what we do during a shoebox time. But 
when it becomes shoebox time, we look at all this stuff and we say, man, look what we did. This looks pretty good. It's like looking in the mirror and thinking, man, we look pretty good. And then we get in a, a brightly lit, lit room and the truth comes out. And that's what it says. It says, don't be, don't be, don't be falling away from these things. Keep a tight rein on the tongue. Keep a, keep a right, right rein. Don't be deceiving yourselves that you're better what you really are. Don't forget about when you look in that mirror, what God tells you to look like, to look like it outside of that mirror. Because sometimes, you know, people, again, I mean, I would have had none looking in that mirror and thinking, man, I look pretty good. And then I get away, and I really didn't know that it didn't look good, you know, because I didn't have anything to look at. We're constantly supposed to be looking in the mirror to see exactly what, who we are and what God has designed us to be. And he uses it to a point of the orphans and the widows to really care for people. That deep down religion, that relationship that it can't be shaken. And what better to do that with is in the orphans and the widows. If we start there, it can only get better. So we can't just look at, you know, packing the boxes here and doing that kind of stuff and feeling good about ourselves. It's when we leave here. It's when we walk the streets. It's when we deal with each other. It's when we do the things we're doing. That's when God says, you know what? You're getting it. It's not just a matter of being religious. It's a matter of relationships. It's a matter of caring for one another, dealing with each other. I look at our world last since Tuesday, and it's a mess. It's a stinking mess. And I see it on Facebook, and I see it you know, on TV, the different things, and people just talking trash. And I guarantee you there's a lot of Christians, religious people, that are running these streets. But they're, they're not holding their tongue. They're not doing the things that, that what God has inquired us to do. But we're being what? Polluted by the world. We're sucking all this in. And, and what happens when, 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 when crap goes in? Crap comes up. I mean, that's exactly what is coming out right now. And we can't sit and live that kind of a, a behavior. Let's look at James 1, 5 through 6 once. King Solomon, he prayed for wisdom. Anyone ever just pray for wisdom? I'm not talking knowledge, just wisdom. Just a, a look at a situation and say, Lord, I need the wisdom to know exactly how to deal with the situation, how to deal with these people, how to, how to deal with whatever's going on in my life. And here in James 1, 5, it says, if, if any of you lack wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. Because the one who doubts is like a wave of sea blown and tossed by the wind. Now, a lot of times we, we can associate this with, if we ask God for it, we'll get it. That's not what he's talking about here. He's talking strictly wisdom here. He says, don't have any doubt. Ask God for the wisdom that you need in order to do what you need to do, in order to how to live with the way you need to, how to love the people that God's told you to love, and without a doubt, he'll give it to you. I mean, we don't have to. And if we don't, we say, man, you know, I'm asking for wisdom, but I really don't think God's going to give it to me. Well, guess what? You're probably not going to get it. So you're going to, what, live how the world is. You're going to get polluted by the world. If, if you look at this and say, you know what, I want the wisdom that I need in order to follow Christ the best I can, he's going to give it to you. If you believe without a doubt, he will give it to you. So again, I mean, this isn't your little um, eight ball that you can make your wishes and ask it for it to be true. This is, this is a wisdom kind of thing. This is what God can give you without a doubt every day. Do you ever wake up in the morning and say, Lord, just give me wisdom for the day. Know exactly what I'm supposed to do, how I'm supposed to say it, how I'm supposed to act, how I'm supposed to do things. And he will give that to you. He will deliver it to you. Love is a, a word that has completely fallen apart, I think. I mean, we start hearing the word love a lot. And, and, and to be honest, I feel bad for like, the generation that's coming up. Because you see love in a whole different sense of what the word means from the TV shows and the, and the songs and the different things. Because the ultimate of love is what? Christ died for us. And what is it? It's an action word. You know, love is really, you know, um, just a, a warm, fuzzy kind of thing. Well, I love everybody. No, you don't. You tolerate everybody. <laughs> but 
do you show your love to everybody? Okay? Because we can't just use that word. And we can love everybody, but it's going to come out in your actions. It's how do we treat each other? How do we deal with one another? You know, when I mess up, you know, if you get that angry with me where you can't love, you know, then we got problems. Or if I get angry at you and I can't love, then there's a problem. But that word is an action word. And God says we are to love over and over and over again. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your mind. And love your neighbors as yourself. That is the greatest commandment of all. We are called to love. And how do we love if we look in the mirror one minute and we act this way and we walk over here and we don't show our actions out of that? I mean, to me, that's just a, a polluted way of living in this world. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 13, 8 through 13 once. 1 Corinthians 13, 8 through 13. And I love this text. I really do. Just, as I read this, just let it soak in. Okay? Really just let, let these words soak in. It says, love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there is tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child and I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put childish ways behind me. Now we see, but a poor reflection is in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, love. But the greatest disease are what? Love. We know what we need to do. Go back to the very beginning of that text once, Kevin, would you? Love never fails. Do you ever think about how that works in our lives? I mean, if we speak it, and there's a, I mean, it's like a clinging symbol. You can, you can prophesy all you want, you can, you can fill all the shoeboxes you want, and, and you can do all the things that you're doing all you want. But if you don't have love, we have nothing. And this world is falling apart with love. Because I don't see love. 1 Corinthians 13 says love is not boastful. It's not proud. It's not self-seeking. That is our world today. We see spoiled brats in this world today. I didn't get my way. And I'm not just talking the election. I'm talking every a lot of things. That just made me sick this week because that's what it is. It's a bunch of spoiled brats not getting their way. And do you think it would have been different if the Republicans would have, uh, would have lost? No. We'd have the same garbage going on out there right now, I believe. Because we didn't get our way. And we'd be bad-mouthing, we'd be sm smashing on each other. It's like, really? One nation under God, that's what we need to be. And God's what? Love. He's not hate. He's not envious. He's not all this other garbage that's going on out there. And we even get that, you know, sometimes inside the church, inside our communities, inside our families. You know, we're becoming very self-righteous, individualistic kind of people. It's about me. It's not about you. It's not about you. It's all about me. If I walk away happy, if I walk away getting what I want, then I'm happy. Then I might love you. It's when you don't get your own way. It's when you don't get the things you want. It's when you sacrifice. It's when you give up what you want in life for somebody else is what love is. I try to share that with the premarital people that I do uh, classes with every time. Love is not about you. It's about how you can serve your spouse. What can you sacrifice? What can you give up? And when you can do those things, that's love. And I see you kids carrying babies around the last few days. That's just freaky to me. But, I mean, these mm -hmm. fake babies. But, but seriously, that's, I mean, hopefully that 
guys teach them a lesson not to have babies too soon because it's a pain in the butt hauling a kid around when you're not ready to have a kid. But that's when you find out what true love is. Because see, when a baby's born, I mean, Zeke, he's just totally dependent on you guys, right? He gives nothing back. I mean, he just poops and eats and, and does all that kind of stuff. I mean, there's no love in that necessarily. I mean, he, I mean in, a, in a broad sense, I mean, I'm sure he loves his parents, but it's all about him. And that's how we're acting. We're acting no different than Zeke and Avery. And, 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 I mean, all, and, all these people that, that are, are, are just acting like babies, like, I want my way. You feed me. You take care of me. You change my diaper. You don't have to change my diaper. <laughs> You get what I mean? I mean, seriously, I mean, we have to start looking at, I mean, we're supposed to be Christ-like, correct? Okay, here's, here's Christ, the ultimate act of love. He came and died for us. And we're supposed to be like who? Christ. Love people. I mean, you brought up our veterans. I'm so proud of our veterans. I think of my dad every time this year. You know, he served in the Navy. You know, Scripture says there's no greater friend than one who would lay his life down for a friend. I mean, but I look at Christ, and that's a Christ-like example of someone who's willing to go into the, into the battle and die for me. You know, are we willing to, to go into the battle for each other? Have each other's backs? Love on each other, you know. Are we willing to go outside these walls and and go? Someone says something negative to me, we love them. And how do we love them? By what? Our actions, our words. We can get wrapped up in the in the in the polluted part of the world. Scripture says that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Just stay away from that area. Look in the mirror. See what God has created in you. And don't don't be confused. Don't walk away. Forgetting what that reflection should look like. Don't continuously have bad hair days. Have a good hair day. And we can look at that mirror and say, you know what? I accomplished what Christ wanted me to accomplish today. I didn't bad mouth. I didn't talk bad. I didn't put net people down. I didn't go against your, your thoughts, your beliefs. I mean, it's not for us to pour our our beliefs and on people, it's, it's the love. It really is. God will do his work. He'll take care of that. But my political agenda in this world is Christ. You know, I said that a long time ago. I'd vote for him. You know, there still isn't anybody on that ballot who's going to outweigh him. I mean, it just isn't. So, so love on each other. Love each other, you know, as we, we go through life here, as we, as we pack these boxes. Do it out of love. Think about the, the kids that are going to get these. We had, um, we had a gal from uh, FUM uh, come not too long ago, and she talked about the church in Kenya. You see, the one, one church in Kenya has just about as many members as we have in, in Indiana. Okay? They are getting to a point of having to come and do mission work here. You know, again, we can't look and forget about who we are because these people that are getting this, a lot of them are getting it. They put all this worldly stuff out. And that's all they have is Christ. That's why they see miraculous things happening in God's name. That's all they have. I mean, the only present that these kids will get, most of these kids will get to be the shoebox. I get calls, and it started last week already. And I'm, I'm not putting anyone down, okay? But I need help with presents for my kids. And you start talking to them about priorities and the different things that they really need in those kids. It's like, well, one present isn't enough. They want tree folds. I mean, they, it just becomes something more than what it is. So we need to be an example in this 
in, in this church, this community, and the people around us. We need to love on people, and I want to see kids get a present. Don't get me wrong. But you can ask any amount of my kids growing up. They each got one present every Christmas. That's it. And then we got a family gift for everyone. Because we wanted to make it about Christ. And I'm not trying to judge anyone, and I'm not saying I'm better than anyone else. But, you know, we talked last week about tithing and different. It is. It's a spiritual discipline of putting Christ here. But when we start worrying about presents and trees and everything else, Christ gets moved down on that list pretty quick. And we, we, we kind of forget about how that looks in the mirror, how we started out. So pray hard for these packages, and not just for them, that God returns the blessing over on you to be that example, to be that love in this community, in our world. You know, I want to do the best we can with what God's given us. And, and this is a huge blessing. I mean, you know, hopefully how many hundreds of kids are going to be blessed, you know, with these going overseas and stuff. But be praying hard for it. When you write your notes, be genuine. And when you tell a kid on a note that I'm praying for you, well, keep praying for him. Don't let this stop today. And then we go out in our life tomorrow. And we don't know who will get them. See, that's the amazing thing, is loving people even though you don't know them. I don't know. I love God's Word. I, I love, you know, mostly when it tells me to grow up. I was a child and did childish things. I acted as a child. I don't want to put them that way. I don't want to act like a child no more. I want to be an adult. There's other things you can be a child.